Hi folks, and welcome to D&D Major. Hi folks, welcome back to D&D Major. I am Gina, and I'm going to be your DM today, and I am joined by... I'm Allison, and I'm playing Farlina, the Tiefling Sorcerer. I'm Evan, I'm playing Valon, the High Elf Rogue. I'm Gus, I'm playing Tybalt, a Human Druid. This is Victor, I'll be playing the Half-Elf Cleric Tamir. Fantastic. Let's jump right in. Before you rises a hulking monstrosity that is almost so large it's hard to comprehend. The bulk of this beast presses up against the ceiling, which rises high, high, higher than any of the rooms you've seen in this temple so far. It almost looks like the ceiling has been carved out to accommodate this creature, but even then, it is strangely pressed up against it as if it could never be contained by a space this size. Its legs are bent and almost broken looking, and it is absolutely still. As you try to understand what this creature is, it's hard because it's so dark, such a deep darkness that your eyes struggle to catch on any of the details. As best you can tell, it looks a bit like maybe an elephant or a rhino with broad, wide legs and a strange, large face, but there is no texture to the creature. It is huge and it is frightening. And it is also encased in what appears to be the same sort of orange glass that you've seen scattered throughout this building. It is frozen in place, and before it, sort of at your feet, between you and the creature, are rows after rows after rows after rows of abjuration magic scored into the stone. And you can see, even past that, in the amber itself, the remnants of what looks like destroyed pieces of abjuration magic. Abjuration magic that has failed and fallen under the force of whatever is containing this creature. What do you do? I have two questions. <laughs> um, one, does this look like any of the creatures I've seen in Vilfer before? And then two, does any of the abjuration magic look recent? Okay. Those are my two questions. No, you have never seen a creature like this before. You, you try to imagine what it might look like standing and you can't. It is so large. Uh, yeah, you've never seen anything even approaching this before. The abjuration magic all looks pretty new, actually. Even the destroyed, destroyed runes under the, the creature's feet. By new, I don't mean in the past couple of days, but this is not ancient magic. This is not like the magic that lends light to the, the hall full of whispers. This is recent. Well, this is not very good. Uh, I don't it... think this is the way out. I don't think so. Ugh, I've never seen anything like this before. What if the door's hidden on the other behind it? Be a little ironic, wouldn't it? Make a perception check. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is a 14. Okay. Because this creature is hard to look at, it's difficult to sort of train your eye to look past it. Mm -hmm. But beyond the wall of amber that spreads from one side of this hall to the other, there does appear to be not a door, but maybe a tunnel. It's huge. It's the same size as this creature and the encased amber. Um, it looks like maybe that's the way it got here at some point. Um, so there is a, a huge tunnel on the other side, but it is absolutely blocked by the creature and the amber. I think this is relatively recent. This magic does not look like it's old. Whatever this thing is, it it is new. To be clear, the reason that the magic looks new is not because you have like arcanist training, although that is also true, but it's, it's, like it's not, literally, you can see the dust from where some of the runes have been carved. It's like not broken. Okay. Like exactly. It, it very clearly looks like it's been Yeah, there's no done. weathering on it. Yeah. So uh, probably Jonathan knows something about this. Definitely. Yeah. Well, <laughs> kind, of, kind of him to share, you know. It oh, well. certainly looks like this is just a dead end. We cannot proceed any further. I think so, our uh, our option is the rift. I, yes, I suppose so. We don't know where it goes. We don't know exactly where it will take us. I mean... It's sort of exciting, isn't it? Yes, I suppose so. Weren't, um, weren't you the one urging us to be cautious, uh, like, about an hour ago? Well, there's nowhere else to go. <laughs> Fair enough. I, yes, we either go through there or we're just we entombed through... down here forever. Or we go back and spend two days shifting rubble. Yeah, the rift, I mean... The whole corruption thing isn't really super appealing. Maybe we can try stealing the medallions and the statues in the hall, but... Uh, kind of a bum deal, you know, go through a rift. 
get stuck with whatever the hell kind of corruption Farlina was talking about. Yes, it'd be unfortunate for you to have it. <laughs> Thanks for kind words. You're welcome. So, just to be clear, we're going through the rift. We have no idea where we're going. And we're gonna get corrupted? Well, yeah. Well, so... <laughs> what are the side you... effects of corruption? Counterpoint, do you have another plan? No, I'm just laying it out. <laughs> this is all we've got? I don't know what else to propose. I mean, th- clearly it looks like this would have been the way to go through, but there is no other way. Are there any other... I mean, we can search for more tunnels. Or, or, this, and... thing, or this thing tunneled up from somewhere else, maybe. Maybe we go be- through that tunnel behind it and there's a rift deeper down. Or just an endless series of tunnels. Or it is another rift into the in-betweens on the other side, and this thing came through and it has been stopped. That's what it looks like to me, at least. So, so, so it's rift either way. I think so. I, I, do, I do not know. Well, apparently we also had to go through a rift to get down here. Exactly. Place, we had so. to go through the in-betweens to even get here. It seems like that is the only means of getting out as well. All right, let's... Uh, I suppose. Steal those medallions. Uh, see if they'll do anything <laughs> against the corruption. Do you really and, think uh, stealing these medallions from the voices are really going to help us? I mean, eh, eh do hey, it. Hey, sure shit. Did, did you get a conversation? A little bit, yeah. What they say to you? You you don't seem pleased. Uh, I believe I was rejected by the voices, so. <laughs> so you're looking for vengeance? Not so much vengeance, just uh, you know, just let him let him know I was here. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> Farlina, what what did you see on the other side though? What was your conversation? What do you mean? I mean, I I told you I got rejected. Oh, through the. Obviously, you were accepted. <clears throat> oh well, I, I thought I told you when I came out. They they asked me what I wanted and who I wanted to be, and I I talked with them for a little bit, and then I went inside, and I, there was a an, an altar looking thing with water inside. It was very unusual. I went to like use some magic, and I I started to like lose control of it. Uh-uh. I wasn't able to. I didn't feel comfortable not being able to use my magic in there, so I left. Definitely should have done blood. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Maybe that would it have works been it, but... nine out of ten times. Gotta sacrifice something. They weren't pleased with me either, and I'm, I don't know who else I need to prove myself to, but... Well, can you go back? I asked, and it doesn't think... I don't think that I can. Mm. Well, that seems, seems like a dead end no matter what, because, so... I mean, it was a dead end. Well, it's just a room. Well, we couldn't follow anyway. I could try again, but when we last went in there, the voices seemed like they were gone. Whatever it was. As you all are talking, you hear a kind of high hum in the room and a light sort of rattling noise. And you look over to your left, um, sort of hugged up against the wall, and you see a kind of strange sight, actually. It looks like almost a wagon, some sort of wheeled cart. Um, It's small, probably about like a a foot by a foot. And on top is what looks like an arm. A what? It's a metal arm. It looks like it's armor. And as you look towards it, it reaches over the side of the wagon and starts drawing and scratching. (laughs) I'm going right over to that thing right now. You do so. And as you go up to it, you see that it is slowly moving along the the path alongside the (laughs) abjuration magic and scratching in another layer. A maker bot. (laughs) Oh man, this is incredible. I want to take this. (laughs) This is, well... No, I shouldn't. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Tibble, Tibble kind of pokes it a couple of times. He, it's definitely running in his head to just kind of hit it. Uh, okay. But he's not I mean, going to. He's not going to yet. Okay, I mean, if you poke it, it takes the force of your poke mm. and just keeps on at it. It seems like it has some sort of... Like, obviously, it's animated somehow, and it seems to just write itself and keep on at whatever it's doing. Boston Dynamics has been here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Carlina's eyes are just alight. I just want to, I want to go over and like inspect it and yeah, get a feel for it. Does it look like Val's arm? Yes, it does. You didn't get a very good look at the exact magic that was carved into that arm, but there is a similar series of intricate designs almost delicately placed along this arm. It's not as beautifully made. With her arm, it was made to look like a actual person's arm. It was made to sort of have that elegance to it when she played the lute, but this is different. It's very... It's more like a construct. Yeah, it's very simple, but it is moving with the same sort of elegance. I won't take it, but I will make a drawing of it. Okay. <laughs> you, you'll, 
Do I notice him making a drawing? Make a perception. I'm not hiding. (laughs) I'm I'm standing next to it. Uh, Could you please make a copy of that for me, please? Or like, yeah, I don't have loose paper. This is just a book. I guess I can can tear one out. Can you tear a page out? It's yeah, okay. Please, thank you. This book's sort of magical. (laughs) I don't know. Do you have non-magical paper with you? Not right (laughs) now. I, I carry a lot, okay? I'll rummage through my bag and I'll give him a little piece of parchment. I'm like, please. I'll make a rubbing. If you could do a quick drawing of this, that would be great. Okay, so you're actually, you're doing a rubbing on the arm as it's moving? Or... No. Oh, okay. <laughs> my drawing okay. on her paper. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make I do sure. have charcoal, but I don't have any regular paper because that is an oversight. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make a performance check to see how... Absolutely. Yeah. Looking for sub 10 here. <laughs> Oh, no. It's just like uh, a stick figure arm. Seven. It's a pretty crude drawing. <laughs> You're able to indicate, like, where the major joints are on this hand, and that, like... I want the mechanism more than the design. Exactly. So you're able to get the mechanism, <laughs> but not the magic. Okay. But that is I, fine. I'm sorry, this isn't really my forte. Oh, uh, it, yeah, th- it's okay. I'm it's, good at other things. This is fine. I, I, it at least gets the concept down, and this is, this is what I need, and I'll fold it up and stick it in my bag but i'll also like spend some time eyeballing the thing a little more how yeah. how close are we to like the edge of the creature the edge of the creature or the edge of the glass uh i guess we're at the edge of the abjuration magics yeah <laughs> that's what so, I mean. how far so, does that extend to the so there's probably about 15 feet of magic of rooms. yeah of lines and then past that that's where it hits the glass and then there's past that probably another maybe 20 feet of wrecked magic before you actually hit the okay the how much uh how much blank space is left probably about 10 feet okay any anything else in this room like anything else other than this massive hulking ice age <laughs> creature uh make a perception check okay. uh 18 okay Otherwise, the room is actually fairly blank, but that's because it's hard to tell what this room actually once looked like before it was burrowed into. You can kind of look up and see that the true ceiling of this room was significantly lower than where the creature currently resides. Whatever tore this tunnel blasted its way into this space. The actual ceiling is probably about 20 feet tall. It's a pretty tall ceiling, but that's nothing to where the the creature is. I think our only option here is turn back around and we can at least mention this to Jonathan yeah. and maybe get some uh, <laughs> some answers before we um, proceed. I'm not dumb enough to mess with this, so I'm, I'm ready to go back and check on our, yes. on our others. This mechanism is incredibly intriguing to me, and as much as I would like to take it with me, I... It has a use it here. It has a use here, so... Do you move back? Anywhere, anywhere else? Probably not. I don't not. think I want to be in this do room you, do anymore. Do you want to go to the hallway and pry a medallion off? I think I think we should wait until we're about to go. Through. So you're ready to go, last moment, <laughs> sort yeah. of sort of decision. What do you think? We should ask Jonathan and see what he knows. I think, or what he'll tell us. Yeah, yeah. I think he he must know that this thing is here. This is underneath the castle right now. This massive, whatever. Well, the magic's relatively fresh, and he probably he probably could point us at whoever made that arm there. That is or true. He'll, I have, I have, or he'll clam up and won't tell us I have anything, an idea which, of where which the, is my guess is what he's going to do. <laughs> I have an idea of where this mechanism came from. But okay. Let's go back and see. Yeah, we'll just head back. Okay. You cross back into the large central hall, climb to the altar, and then curve back down the, the sort of hall full of whispers uh, lined on either side. No whispers? No whispers. It is silent <laughs> in there at the moment. The room is still lit, though, and you cross through the double doors back into the large room with the pool and the rift. It sits where it sat before, hovering in midair. Not really a tear in space, but just a strange distortion. Um, And you duck underneath it and cross along the rim of the pool back to the room in which you started. You take out the hexagonal key, place it into the lock, and the doors slide open. Hello, we have returned. Everyone okay in there? Inside, <laughs> that you find line. steely silence. <laughs> the regent has actually stood up. He's no longer lying down, and he's awkwardly propped against a wall. It looks like he's sort of sorting through the cabinet in which he found the hexagonal key in the first place. Bass is waiting by the door. You look to your right, and she's sitting on the ground looking up at you. Uh, and Lady Opreed has not moved. She is in exactly <laughs> the same place on the floor. How long has Hi. it been since we left them? It's been probably about 
40 it minutes. It hasn't been that long. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. not been that long. Less, yeah, less than an hour, <laughs> for sure. Um, yikes. <laughs> uh, the regent hmm. turns when you walk in, and as he looks at, like he's about to say something, Lady O'Preed cuts in. He's been talking to himself. He's been whispering and looks up at you like she's sharing some sort of secret. Sometimes hey. people think best that way. Hey, anything juicy? Like he's talking to someone. And, and the regent's just kind of sitting there shaking his head with this, like, quarter <laughs> smile on his face. Like, he just is so tired. <laughs> a, a little a little condescendingly, maybe. There, there is also magic. She's like, then, then, do you not want to know what he's sharing with people? Why, why, if he can talk with people, why isn't there a rescue? Why aren't we on our way out? And the regent leans back against the wall that he's propped against more heavily. He's like, I was talking to my wife. And there's no rescue because there's a bad... It's... It's bad up there. The place where the rift is is collapsed, and it's not accessible, which means that the people on the other side of the collapse that fell with us are also in equal danger. And unfortunately, they aren't in a secured place. They don't have a temple to hide in that's safe from the earthquakes. I'm trying to get them out. They take priority. Is there any way we can go back to where the where the rubble or the collapse is and and work through there it doesn't seem like it though does it like the the ceiling collapsed it also was collapsing when we ran from it we haven't been back well in our searching we didn't really find another way beyond the rift in the next room we proceeded into this temple area further and um it is a dead end uh a very dramatic very large (laughs) very colossal monstrous dead end I don't know. Sort if, of dart. I don't know if you are aware of this, sir. I told you we had other purposes down here. Now you've seen what they are, and why we weren't as interested in investigating this place as we were in keeping that where it is. I saw what it was, but what is it? I don't know. Do you know on the other side if that was a passage out where it is now? Is that what it once was? That is a difficult question. If it is a difficult question, then it is not easy to answer, and that means it's a no. So, <laughs> let's go with that. <laughs> Can I inside check on the microphone? <laughs> Give it a whirl. <laughs> yeah. I'll certainly try. <laughs> oh. Nah. <laughs> Two. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to roll against that. <laughs> Not not so naturally gifted in that one. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Why am I not inside checking? I should be. <laughs> I should be inside checking more. So I think at this point we uh, our own well not the only option, but our, our best option is to go through that rift above the pool. Based on our assessment. But where does that leave you and the rest of the people on the other side? If you're trying to communicate with them and to help them, can you even do that if we go through there? Depends on where it drops us. And I realize that's not helpful, but I I cannot communicate with my people from too great of a distance. I can communicate here, and if we're lucky, it may be that the, the in-betweens are not located so far as we think. But it's a gamble, and it's not necessarily a gamble I feel comfortable taking. Who exactly are you communicating with other than your wife? My Anybody? wife. And, oh, that's that's just the one. Yeah, she's conveying our messages at the moment. Okay. She's a mage of some power. She should be able to help. We could stick it out here another night. And wait for someone to dig us out? Wait for change. Or news. Wake the beast up, see where it tunnels to. Follow Not me. my recommendation. <laughs> it is one of the options. Maybe. I don't know how to do that. Do you? <laughs> I kick that little robot. <laughs> the challenge is we are so deep beneath the earth at the moment. The only way we knew to get down here was that path through the in-betweens, and it's, it's, they, it is buried beneath the earth. How about a vote? Uh, how, how deep would you say it's buried beneath the earth? I haven't been up there. It's buried Oh, this is, above yeah, us. that's a, that's a Unknown. me question. That's a me question, thinking about, like, rubble. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I mean, it, you know you fell, and then you hit the rift. Okay. And you don't know where where that was. <laughs> it is unclear. Yeah. Okay. You so. were already beneath the. It's just like that would that would require too much guesswork. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. even. We're right at the edge between the crust and the mantle. Yeah, it's we're, we're very hot. Where are we relative to the more of like this discontinuity? Uh, it's very important. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant where the the rift in the first place was, not where <laughs> oh, we are now. Uh, that too. Um, you, you don't know either of those things. Yeah, where, where... <laughs> We're is, underground is, is, this earth, is this planet hollow? <laughs> do, do, do plate tectonics exist in this world? 
This is a good question. We have a lot of, not even metaphysical, regular oh, physical God. questions. Oh my God. Is, is this world flat? <laughs> Can we fall off the edge? <laughs> if we find it. It's actually a square. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, That's what they mean by plane. <laughs> hey. um, well, so... Should we vote? I mean, what... Hey, I can't see many other ways. What can your wife do for us if we wait any longer? Like, can they... What are... You said the state of things are bad. Does that mean there's no point in waiting? We just need to move? He kind of pauses and taps his thumb against his elbow impatiently. And then after a moment, he sighs and he looks back. I don't know that she is going to be able to get to us even in the next series of days. And I don't like the idea of keeping this many people underground with no resources for that long. I also don't know whether this situation is going to worsen. From what I've heard, the earthquakes haven't stopped. I was actually just about to ask that, if they have any idea on the other side of what is happening. My wife, she was on the other side and she was able to get a few people out of there. But from what I understand, getting back is proving too dangerous. There's the risk of collapse. There's the risk of... Well, to be honest, there's the risk that it's already collapsed. Part of me feels like we should be prepared for the possible reality that everyone on the other side is already dead. If it changes the decision, I can provide resources and healing for us for any number of days. But we are right on the edge of... I mean, we are still on this side, but we are... On the edge of the in-betweens, there are things coming through that will continue to come through if we stay here. We've already encountered multiple things. And that puts all of you, and I point to everybody, at risk of being corrupted. Bass raises her hand. I'm, uh, I'm for taking the risk. Whatever the risk is, better trying than dying here. Other votes? I say we do it. Corruption's the one thing I'm worried about, but, uh... Could steal those medallions off the statues in the hall. I'm I'm pretty fixated oh, on that idea right now. Uh, I mean, well, fuck. I mean, Jonathan gets to go through, and he won't get corrupted, but then we will. You 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 looking to get corrupted? I've it's a mirror. I'll be frank. I've stolen a large number of things from temples before, and you're that's, and you're here now. That's not one I would touch. Hey, Bass, how you feel about uh getting some kind of lifelong corruption that eats you from the inside by going through a portal? I mean, I, I don't like that, but I, I like it maybe better than... Do, do, do you know what it is? Like, I, I like it better than being crushed, but not better than maybe getting sick. I don't I mean, know. I mean, Farlina and Jonathan know the most about it in this group. Well, it doesn't affect me, but from what I understand, I, there's a chance you won't get it. But there's also a chance you could, so... Is it curable? I, I believe so. Oh, well... I think... I mean, it depends on the J- level. Jonathan, you seem to be pretty knowledgeable about this kind of stuff. It can be. Depends if it goes too far. My experience with it is maybe a bit different than what you all would experience. So take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt. It is curable or it is permanent, but permanent doesn't necessarily mean dead. It can, but it doesn't have to. I think you know what I mean, Farlina. Yes, I do. Very much so. So It's very ominous. It's a gamble. (laughs) It is an ominous thing. It is, I... it is strange magic that in Veltfru we just live with. Fair enough. Despite, despite my previous comment, I would still vote to take the risk. I'm all for it. I'm just, yeah. Velen, you had concerns earlier. Honestly, I'm against it. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what the corruption will do to us. And I feel like waiting it out at least a few more days seems like a better option to me. But I'll go with what the group decides. Do you think with a couple more days rest, you'd be fitter to travel, Jonathan? Yes. But I also don't know if that's worth the the time it would take. I admit, I have concerns about me going with you, and the primary one is just that if it is dangerous, I will slow you down. But it could be more of a risk for you to sit here and try and heal when we could then be crushed. Yes. Maybe we could uh, flip a coin, roll some dice or something. Miss Miss Lady Opreed, <laughs> do you have any thoughts? You're still. I want to consider. You. She's just shaking her head. I'm. I'm. I'm not going there. No. No. I'm not doing that. No. You could. This could be your tomb. Then. Is Ooh, that what you want? That was. That was crueler than what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go. We need to get out of here. 
no, I'm not doing that. And as, as this happens, the regent just like gives her a look. And usually his face is fairly flat, but this is the first like full expression of frustration and irritation that you've seen on him. He's just like, you don't have that option. You are not staying here alone. We are not leaving you unsupervised. If we go, we all go. If we stay, then at least a few of us need to stay to supervise one another. Why don't we take one more night here, decide in the morning, if there's changing news from the surface, maybe that'll inform our decision. Tamir, do you think taking one more night here is the safe option? In this room, I think it could be. And my medical assessment of these two, I think one more night, they'll be a lot better off. It makes no difference to me. It's just if everybody else would feel more comfortable with one additional day. In the distance, you hear the low groaning noise of another earthquake. Mm, actually, <laughs> maybe it does make a difference to me. <laughs> You've heard them throughout the night. You've heard them throughout the morning. But it's there. And the sound I'm willing to go. Stone room. Can I do anything with them? So, so Druidcraft lets you predict the weather. Could I do something with like something with like talking to? I, I don't know. It's 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 stretch for I don't sure. Think what? you can? Can I, I can I do something with like? You want to be a Richter scale? Reading, reading, yeah. I was <laughs> like, well, well, not like, even like, not even Richter scale, but like reading the temperament of the rock. Yeah, like like an earthbender kind of thing. Yeah, 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 like getting a sense like sort of. I mean, like weather is pressure fronts. <laughs> weather is like. High energy, moving to low energy areas. Could I do this? Is Could this I do rock under strain? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you because that, I think you can answer an the answer. He's an earthy druid. That's actually a cool question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, I, I think I just... I mean, it's the, just the rules as written yeah. is, yeah, you get a little sphere that like shows you the weather. Um, can I like commune with a rock a little bit and, you know, get a sense of... Wait, wait, wait. Can I help with this in any way? <laughs> so you... I could meld you into the stone. I, I, I have not the stone. <laughs> <laughs> um, you place one hand on the, the stone wall of the room and in another conjure up this orange light that hovers above your hand. When the spell activates, the light pulses wildly. You get the feeling that whatever feeling of the earthquake that you get here, it is much, much worse outside. There is something that is causing the earth to just kind of crumble. Yeah, I guess so Tybalt, yeah, Tybalt finishes up and uh, yeah, addresses the room. Um, I, I don't think it's going to get better. <laughs> whatever whatever is causing these earthquakes, it isn't, it isn't, natural's a, natural's a strange word to use in a case like this, but I think it's only going to get worse. There's, there's something causing this. Maybe it's one of those big fucking beasts that Jonathan's group didn't manage to capture. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's a breeding pair and they're just real pissed off right now. <laughs> oh, Regent, sir, is that is that a possibility? Is that even something that could happen? <laughs> He's just shaking his head. Maybe, maybe some whatever kind of fucking energy keeps these rifts together is tearing the, tearing the earth up. Whatever it is, it seems like it's getting worse. I've never heard of anything like that before. But hmm. magic is not something that you can contain. You can try to. You can contain it for some time. I mean, it seems it seems like y'all just live with it down in Viltfer. It just kind of exists. You live in your bubbles, but it does. Yes. Who knows how it behaves down here with all the pressure and whatever else, whatever else magic exists down here, whatever else these wherever people, we are, whatever <laughs> whatever these people built down here. Yes, this is all very foreign to me. I don't know. Yeah, all these uh, all these temples and stone structures crumbling under nature's wrath. Kind of kind of makes you think a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Long get, silence. Clearly, clearly trying to give us a little druid speech here, but yeah. <laughs> Yes, I suppose. Nobody's buying. <laughs> I, suppose I, I mean, what right. I'm trying to say, it's not, a, bit of a bit of a folly here to try and oppose these forces. But, not, uh, not all higher powers require. I don't goals. disagree with you. I, <laughs> I feel like now is not the time. But <laughs> oh, great! So you switched around. You're gonna you're gonna go through the rift now, or I mean, we, or we could sit here and I could pine all night. <laughs> I I will do what the group decides. Well, I think we should stay together. Yeah, I ultimately. believe there were enough votes for rift. Yeah, I think I was I outvoted. So. Rift it is, then. The regent pushes himself off the wall, puts a little bit of weight on his leg, winces, but manages to take a step forward, and after, like, a few steps, does sort of start a stride. Tibble okay. kind of ostentatiously takes a step and uses his staff in like, supporting himself. <laughs> you are so mean! <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna go help Lady Opreed up. Okay. Because she's, she's just sitting on the ground with her arms crossed, not moving. Valen's gonna help the regent. 
earning those brownie points. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, he yeah, grabs you onto your... You got something on your nose oh, there. Yeah. Thank <laughs> Thanks for looking out. <laughs> Velen, he grabs your, your shoulder, but pauses for a moment to see how the situation with Lady Opreet is going to progress. She's, she's just huddled on the ground? Yeah. I'll crouch down. Look, I know you don't like how this is going, and that the unknown can be scary, but staying here alone is not a better choice. It's very easy to say if you have magic, if you know how to fight. I will die if this happens. You, you realize that, right? I will We're- Die. We are together as a group. And, you have our magic. And she's just kind of breathing really hard. Like, I don't know you. I don't know you. And you will leave me to die. I know it. We haven't yet. And she looks past you at the regent. He's just, he's not turned towards her, but he's just looking down sort of in profile at her. I, and I'll whisper even closer. And we can protect you from him. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> Please, please. Uh, you have to say it out loud. I always cocked. Okay. <laughs> I liked it, but I didn't. Uh, it's an audio only. Uh, Nineteen. Okay. Her eyes dart from side to side and then lock with yours. And it's sort of the first time that she's not been warily looking out of the corner of her eye at the regent. And she nods minutely. And she grabs onto your forearm and just sort of lifts herself up. Did we hear you say that? No. I hope not. (laughs) Bass is risen to her feet. She's looking around after a moment. She she walks over to the corner of the room and just grabs a plank of wood. I was gonna say, is there anything else in here worth taking? Yeah, there's there's the bedrolls, but I think some of you have those. Yeah, Yeah. there's a few rations and there's some just like strewn about bits, like she grabbed basically a log. I'm prepped for travel, so I don't need anything else. Does anybody else want to take something? I live off the land. Ooh, do I have anything for her? Actually, Valen will take some rations and a bedroll. Yeah, because I feel like he probably didn't have. Yeah, he <laughs> not does. With him. Yeah, no, I think that's a very good point. I think point. we're gonna take that. Uh, you tuck away some some rations and roll up a bedroll and sort of attach it onto one of the packs. I'll, I'll offer my crowbar to Bass. Be like, maybe this is a little easier. She nods, drops the, the, um, the stick, and takes the crowbar and holds it in, like, a really tight white-knuckled fist at her side. She's shaking a little bit. Like, yes, she was pro doing this, but, like, she does not look... Or, or can you use one of these? And I'll hold out a dagger. She looks at the crowbar. It's like, I think okay. this is a better... I pull out my wine skin and take a big old nice swig from it, and I offer it to Bass. Oh, also, I'm sure mine is empty because I left it with Lady Opreed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. Big perception check. I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> Uh, a lot. 20? Yeah, it's empty. Yeah, you do right, find right, it. Right. <laughs> I'll take it empty. It's been drained dry, yeah. Nice. Bass takes a, a small swig and passes it back. I raise it up. Anybody? There isn't too much left. I'm out. Uh, Tibble will take a, take a little swig. I'll pass him the wine skin. Okay. I'll rehydrate with water because we're doing something dangerous. <laughs> That's a good call. Everybody getting beers before <laughs> Everybody disadvantage at intelligence checks for the next hour. <laughs> I am not drunk. <laughs> she says swear. <laughs> no. I'm fine. This is good. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Any last things you want to do before we do this? Regent Sir, do you have anything to offer that is similar to what you have as precautionary measures before we go in? I don't understand your meaning. Oh, would I not have noticed his... Tattoo? No, we, we talked about the tattoo. We talked about the tattoo. We, we yeah, talked I, all I about it. I think he just didn't know what you meant. Like, oh, okay. People were grabbing weapons and things like that. Something to protect these folks from the in-betweens. I am of negative help on that. All right, then we maybe, can go. Uh, maybe we can uh, drop by the statues and look at look at what's on Jonathan's chest and see. I, I know you think it's <laughs> a bad you're idea. You're obsessed, but... buddy. You're welcome to try. Steal the steal the statues or look at your chest. <laughs> the statue part. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How many of us are there? Four, seven. Yeah, seven of us. All yeah. Ah, oh, crap. All right. All right. If it is what you want to do, if you that would make you feel better, then. I don't know if the uh, disembodied voices would appreciate you taking their medallions, but... Uh... I think it's a fine plan. See, now that has me a little worried right there. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> I'd be curious to see the result. All right, that sounds less good. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, in prep, I will do two more things. I'm going to make sure the disc of orange glass I have is in the bag of holding, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to do the same with the key when we leave. Lock, okay. the, lock the door behind us and then key in the bag of holding. Okay, makes sense. You the, So I believe the, the disc of orange glass was already in the bag. It may have been, I'm yeah. just yeah. making sure. Yeah, it, and, and you check, you reach in and sort of think about the piece of uh, glass and you pull it out, it's there. Just don't want um, it exposed. Yep. We do you uh, ask sort of whoever had the key, you take the key back and tuck it protectively back into the bag of holding. All right, are we going to the hall? I believe so. We'll guide the others around yeah. the rift. <laughs> you sort of duck under, indicating sort of to everybody visually in space where this rift is, and everyone cautiously makes their way under, and then looks, excluding the, the regent, with some awe at the lit, long hallway with the statues lining it. Again, the statues are all ornately dressed in real cloth that is undisturbed by the long time that it's been here, and each have a brooch attached. Are the statues on, uh, like, stone plinths? They're, like, probably five or six inches off the ground. It's not, like, bare statue foot on ground, but they're not raised high above you. Uh, well, uh, yeah, after um, you, sir. Yeah, Tybalt's gonna... Well, actually, so Tybalt's gonna first take a look at Jonathan, or ask, hey, uh, Jonathan, mind if I look at your protective tattoo? Just try and see if we can find one that looks like it. I mean, it'd be a little embarrassing to, uh, you know, steal this, steal somebody's name tag and, you know... <laughs> get some kind of divine punishment for it. He just stares blankly at you, kind of blinks slowly. Fine, all right. So Tybalt's gonna go and try and get one of the brooches. Okay. Is there any pattern to how you choose which one you want to grab, or is it just the, the uh, first one on the left or the right? Yeah, first one on the first one on the right. Okay. I've got some fire up. I go, <laughs> and I produce flame. Okay. Make a perception check, Tybalt. Great. 22. Okay. You walk up to this figure, and it is dressed in this sort of... Actually, it was 24, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> it is lightly detailed, but incredibly ornate, yellow and white, and almost a pusey color in, in slight detail through it, but only like single threads, so it seems very light and delicate. As you put your hand out towards it, you feel this moment of consideration. It's like you feel this tingle along your fingers, along the hairs on your arm, up sort of across your chest. And I need you to make nice. a wisdom saving throw. Uh oh. Do, 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 do. Classic. <laughs> Classic tipple. Eight. Okay. I, I have a very oh, high wisdom. No. <laughs> <laughs> you touch the brooch and you pull on it and it is set in stone. It is immovable. In fact, the fabric seems immovable too. And while it moves like fabric and it, it felt like fabric when you first touched it, now it does not. It is locked in place. Tybalt jumps down. Fucking statue rejecting me again. <laughs> I'd like to go to my statue. Yes, the one you noticed before. <laughs> and at, at the feet in the stone there, I will sketch in chalk my holy symbol. Absolutely. And just for kicks, I'll, I'll try and touch the statue. <laughs> okay. You need not make a wisdom saving throw. Your hands close around the statue and you feel the warm fabric brushing against your fingertips. And for a moment, you're home. In sight, in smell, in sound, it's everything that you have not experienced in a while due to your travels. And then the brooch comes free. Oh, I and wasn't even going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Was everybody watching? <laughs> Was I watching? Uh, I assume so, yeah. And what you saw is as Tamir pulled the brooch away, the shadow just falls dark. I mean, the, the, statue. the statue just oh. falls dark. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. What? Yeah. It, it's almost like its whole, the space in which it's set is it's... impenetrable darkness now. You can't see it. Like the creature? Similar. Yeah. <sighs> mm. This is this is true Vanta Black. This is not a knockoff. <laughs> 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 What did you? What did you do? What? I'll walk over to Tybalt. Got any uh, <laughs> advice on how to do that again? Or you think I'm a uh... hand on the shoulder? Sometimes you just need to have faith. And I walk away. <laughs> Tybalt, <laughs> Tybalt uh, makes a rude gesture. In her <laughs> and I will inspect this brooch now. I guess I wasn't <laughs> planning on getting it. Okay, uh, make an investigation check. Eighteen. I mean, as you were able to see before, there are runes carved into the face of it and sort of etching along the back. It seems like it's it's magical in some way. <laughs> but other than that, you were able to learn most of what you now can see about it the first time you were looking. 
And there were no statues there that looked like they were of Veltfurian origin. It didn't look like it, right? I mean, there were some that had Veltfurian design somewhat, although ancient and mm, okay. like dated, but... Okay. What did you do? I recognized a friend. Is that so? We should move on. Are you sure? I don't think anybody else is going to be able to get one. The regent, kind of satisfied with this experiment, <laughs> <laughs> turns back towards the, the pool hall and limps his way towards the rift and stares up at it. Before we go in, I'd like to help a few people out, just in case. Okay, what do you mean right. by that? I'm going, right before we go through the rift, I'm going to bless everyone except me and Tibble. Because <laughs> that's as many as I can do. And he's being a real dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the regent's included in that? Yep. Okay. <laughs> sure is. Oh. Are you sure? All right. Are you sure? Would he say anything about being blessed? But, oh, yeah. You should do it. You should do I it. I didn't ask. You did it. So, yeah. You see his back turned, and you concentrate on your holy symbol for a moment and cast bless. And there's a moment as the spell takes shape where it sort of hovers over each of the individuals on whom you want to bestow it. You can feel it about to sink into their shoulders uh, like a mantle. And then it touches the regent and the spell amps up and then explodes back at you. And what a uh, spell slot. Uh, third. It's a third. <gasps> do you have another third? I do. You lose that as well. Damn. As you feel your magic eviscerated under the force of the backfiring spell. And the, the regent turns on his heel, his eyes wide, as he sees you kind of like sorry. flinch I'm back sorry. away from the force of the magic. I told you not to do that. Are you okay? Yeah, just... Are you sure? A new, Concentrate on your magic. A, a Are new you okay? A new experience for me. I think I'm okay. <laughs> Am I okay? <laughs> You're all right. You're, it, it's as you described. But if, judging from the, the regent's eyes, this has been a bad experience in the past. Uh, His hand is sort of shaking as he holds it towards you. What? Are you Are you both okay? Yes, I'm fine. It's a fucking party trick. <laughs> what? Sorry, I'm taking notes. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I told you no magic. Keep it to yourself. You said no healing. I said no yeah. magic. He said no magic. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, well, screw it. I'll do it again on everybody but him and me. <laughs> yeah, <'Cause, laughs> yeah, I have another third. Because <laughs> I'm stubborn. Right. <laughs> and I wanted to do this for everybody. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, and Tibble gets included this time, I guess. <laughs> so am I double blessed? No, it didn't hit you no. the first time. Oh, okay. Dang. Okay. It doesn't work that way. I see, I see. Unfortunately, it, the spell failed. The, yeah, the whole spell rebounded. Okay. But it only lasts a minute, so it's like right before we're going through. And we gotta go. Oh, okay. Thank you for sharing that now as you cast this spell. Let's go! <laughs> All right. I believe I did. <laughs> With the holy magic settling into your shoulders, you all cram together on this side of the pool that faces the rift, and one by one, you walk into it. And then there's nothing but static. Sourceless noise. Too loud to be anything at all. It tears through your head, sparks before your eyes, and it seems to hit you in waves. Though what distinguishes one wave from another eludes you. It's static, and it's static, and it's static, and it's static. Wall after wall of noise and light. And then amongst the noise, you sense something else, something solid, something colorful. And without even meaning to, your minds latch onto it. And you blink. And you find yourselves looking down the sloping side of a mountain at a craterous lake below. You're standing on a tilted clearing, grass and scrub brush laid out around you on either side, and you see walls of trees that curve down into the valley. The peaks of the mountains form a wall on the sides of the lake as they rise and rise until suddenly they, and everything else, stops. Everything ends. A wall of black void cuts through the ground, the mountains, the violet sky, the clouds above you, and it rises up and up and up until you can't see it anymore. Between you and the lake is a herd of maybe two dozen creatures. Some look like elk, deer, even great broad boar, and they're braying and darting in panic. A deep rumbling noise grates through the earth, and the land near the void splits mosaic-like as cracks carve the ground away from the void and slit the lake's shores. The animals panic, and a group of boars breaks away from the pack and charges in your direction. But before you can react, you hear a rustle to your left, the air parting, 
and in a breath a wall of fire rises between you and the charging boars. They scream, breaking formation and running away towards the forest as a figure on your left moves into view. It stands tall above you, eight feet or so to the top of its head and then its great horns rising above that. It's long and lanky, its form wasting thin as it gestures forward with two of its four clawed arms. It seems almost to be made of shadow, not quite as dark as the void in front of you, but veiled and not fully there. Still, you make out the wings at its back, the hooves of its feet, its lashing tail. And finally, its most notable feature, it has a globe of light sunk into its chest that burns up its neck and blazes out of four holes in its face where eyes should be. It releases the spell it casts, leaving the wall of fire to rage in the brush, and it turns to face you. It blinks, light flashing, and you can see its eyes glowing wide. Thank you for watching In Betweens Episode 7. In Betweens was written by Gina Smith, starring Gina Smith, Allison Mann, Gus Ireland, Evan Falco, and Victor Mann. The music was composed, orchestrated, and recorded by Jacob Ryan Smith. D&D Major was created by Gina Smith, Jacob Ryan Smith, and Allison Mann. If you're interested in supporting the creators and future productions, consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash shortonegaming. Or to see our Let's Plays and other projects, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Short One Gaming.